When he came near the stream, Vandiyathevan knew very well that the queen sitting in the boat was squat. As Alvarkadian stood there, Vandiyadeva too hesitated. Father! Why are you standing? The younger brat has been waiting for you for a long time. When you get into the boat, first say the good word, the prince has arrived, he is safe. I'll see if I can catch it again and cage it. How much trouble do you get from your scurrying adventures? All were Kadian said and hurried back the way he had come. Vandiyathevan felt a great surprise in his mind. How does he know all the details? Even so, we are not asked for any details. Just speculation? Or do you know everything? There are two types of Andy, inheritance, and Panchayat Andy, there seem to be two such types in each other. I became one with urgency, so I often get embarrassed. This Vaishnava is of the same lineage, so he is doing his work calmly without any fuss. But who does he work for? Is everything he said about himself true? Thinking like this, Vandiyathevan came to the river bank and saw the face of the princess in the stream. He forgot all Workadian. He forgot what he had done. He forgot the world and forgot himself. Alas, this woman's face had not left her for a moment. In dreams and in dreams, in storms and mountains, and even in the middle of the sea, it continued with him. But how strange! The beauty of this woman's face increases when seen in person. Why is the throat blocked? Why this palpitation in the chest? Without self-consciousness Vandiyadeva went down a few steps into the water and climbed into the stream. The princess looked at the runner and signalled, and the runner started moving. Vandiyadeva's soul also began to swing. Nimitaka. Do you say Nimitta only to princes? Do you say Nimitta to me? How do you say Nimitta? Do you say it by looking at the planets and stars? Or by looking at crows and sparrows? Do you say it by looking at a hand line? It's like you say it by looking at a face. If not, why are you staring at my face? If you do this, none of the high caste women will come forward to ask for your sake. That was said by King Vandiyadevan as a sweet melody in his ears. Ma'am. I did not look at their faces to see them. I tried to remember that they looked like faces I had seen somewhere, sometime. I know, I know. I know you are very forgetful. Let me remind you. About forty days ago, you first saw the baby in the astrologer's house. Then, the same day, you saw him at the palace. I went to distant lakes and rivers, caught silver fish, gold fish and emerald fish and brought them back. You picked them up and released them back into the running water, enjoying watching them swim away. I went to distant seas and breathed in the depths of the sea and collected pearls and corals and gave them away. After measuring them by hand, you called the boys and girls of the village and sprinkled pearls and corals on their tiny hands. I waited and plucked the linden fruit that grows once in thirty years from a linden tree which grew for three hundred years and presented it to them. You gave it to the Nagano bird that you had raised and watched it gobble up the fruit and eat it. I went to the heaven and showered the Mandihara flowers there. Will these compare to the beauty and fragrance of the mulberry flower that blooms on our Kola fence? You said that. I bought from Devendran the Opala Ratna harem that he wears and gave it to him. Would I even touch the garland worn by the other Indra for discipline? You said that. I went to Kailasam performed penance before Goddess Parvati and bought the Silom Bam worn on the feet of the Goddess. I told them to burn their feet. Oh! Majigan Mata's golden bell fall on my feet? What is obscenity? Take it back and give it away. I went to the battlefield and defeated the kings of the sixty-four nations, collected all their jewels and offered them tribute. Themselves, you kicked those crowns with your feet. Oh! See their delicate flowery feet. I was worried. Princess. Are all these true or not? Or is it true that I saw them for the first time forty days ago? Said Vandiyathevan. Even so, he did not seem to have finished talking. Goddess. Another memory comes to mind. Once we boarded the silver stream, 
clutching the golden-tipped ivory oars, pushing the vanilla waves across the celestial ocean, and journeyed. He began. Alas! This man seems so mad that he must turn the boat ashore. Said the princess. No, goddess, no. My knowledge was clear until I reached the banks of this stream a little while ago. Otherwise, could I have found a way to enter this ancient city? Could I have told Madhurandakat Deva that he was the benefactor and made him believe it, and come to the palace? Could I have escaped so easily from the son of the physician? As soon as I boarded this boat and saw their faces, I fainted like a drunkard. Vandiyathevan said. Sir, then don't look at my face. Look at the clear water of this stream. Look at the blue sky, see the trees that grow to the sky on the banks of the stream, see the palace roofs, see the marble steps, see the amber flowers blooming in this stream, the red water flowers, or at least see the face of this deaf streamer. While looking like that, what happened when they left, Kaya, Pasama will tell you. Did you bring the prince, is he safe? First let him know where you left him and with whom you left him, then he will tell you everything that happened before he left here. Said the princess. Vandiyathevan said, Devi. If I had not successfully completed the task I agreed with them, would I have returned to them and shown my face? I brought the prince from Sri Lanka. I brought him back after overcoming a thousand obstacles. I cannot say that the prince is well. When I parted from him, he was in a severe mood. But I have left him in safe hands. I have left the prince with the runner girl Punguzali and the flower boy Santhan Amuthan. They would give their lives a hundred thousand times to save the prince. He said. At that moment there arose in the distance a terrible, disconcerting, howling sound of many thousands of voices in unison. Erlangamari and Vandiyathevan looked in the direction of the sound with fear and concern. What is that uproar? Doesn't it sound like the cries of an angry mob? Yes, it seems so. Vandiyathevan said.